not allow people to say, you know, off with his head, you know, kill him. He's a terrorist. You know, he's he's, he's this and that. Um, you know, I, I think they're well within their 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 rights to attack him on his, you know, his if they see that think he's inexperienced, or attack him on his voting record, or attack him on his on his, things he's said in public and so on. But you know, let's not call each other terrorists, and let's not. I, I don't think it serves any purpose. I think most people, you know. Most people don't want to hear that stuff, and I think they, they, they want to see the country get on the right track, and, and if it's McCain, that, that's the right guy, great. If it's Obama, who's the right guy, great, too. But I think this, this, is, uh, this is disappointing, especially coming from, from uh, Senator McCain. That's somebody that I actually really, really have had a lot of respect for over the years that uh, I, I, you know, I, would have, I would have gladly ho uh, voted for in, in 2000 had he been the nominee. But um, this was disappointing to me. And so I felt the need to, to speak out because I, it was really kind of getting to me. You've, uh, you've often mentioned uh, that you can be more effective uh, through your writing uh, if you lived outside of Afghanistan. You know, um, we, we often ask this question of a lot of Iraqi Americans. You know, why did you go back to Iraq? Why, um, why don't you go back to Afghanistan, Khalid? Why do you feel that you can be more effective here in America if you really wanted to help your country? Why well, I, I think there's only limited ways in which I can help when I go to Afghanistan. First of all, um, I'm kind of a controversial figure in Afghanistan, and mm -hmm. I, I may not be welcome there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, I think I may not be welcome in some circles. Um, um, you know, I've, I have talked about things that I feel are fundamentally true about Afghan culture. I've written them both lovingly, um, both about things that I think are flattering and are positive and, and honorable, and also things that I think are real problems in Afghan society that some people have objected to very, very strongly. So for, for me to go put myself in that environment and say, here I am, I'm going to save the day or I'm going to help, I think mm -hmm. some people wouldn't take, that, take very kindly to that. Um, I think where I could be most effective is in helping to continue global focus on Afghanistan through my books, through my, my speaking engagements. Um, and to remind people that there is a job to be finished in Afghanistan. You know, the war in Iraq was terrible for Afghanistan. It was a disaster. I mean, I, I, when I landed in Kabul in 2003, it was the day that the U.S. invaded Iraq. And you could just, just about hear the collective groan come out of the city. And the fear was that the invasion of Iraq was going to siphon, you know, military resources, financial resources, human resources, humanitarian resources from Afghanistan into Iraq. And that's pretty much what happened. While we became engaged, entangled in that war, the world kind of forgot about Afghanistan. You know, it, it, there were articles written in major magazines, the forgotten war, the neglected war. Uh, and of course, while we were neglecting and forgetting, the Taliban regrouped. And now suddenly, everybody's talking about refocusing the, 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 you know, the war on terror in Afghanistan, now that the conflict has really become a different kind of conflict. So I think that in, in, from my goal, is to continue to, to talk about Afghanistan, to keep it alive in the, in the public consciousness, in the public dialogue, and to use whatever access I've been granted um, to media or to the public to not only raise awareness about Afghanistan, but also to help uh, raise funds for programs that are dear to my heart, such as you know, building schools, building, rebuilding villages, helping orphanages, helping build uh, you know, vocational centers for women, and so on and so forth. As, so as, as I've been doing the last few years. So I, I just think I could be a lot more effective from here than as you know, living in Afghanistan. Aside from uh, encouraging your daughter to come to Bernal, uh, <laughs> what, uh, what, what else, what kinds of uh, advice do you give her as a young woman growing up here in America? I mean, I know a lot of these, there's a lot of uh, women's college uh, students here in this audience who might want to be aspiring writers, or maybe you don't want to write, but um, what kind of advice would you give your daughter and give these students here in the well, crowd? For my daughter, I mean, it, it, you know, she's being raised in a very different environment than me. Um, and and I, what I want from not only my daughter, but both of my children, is to have an appreciation of who they are, um, you know, their, their background being from Afghanistan, and have, you know, an, an understanding of their heritage, uh, and hopefully a sense of curiosity about it. I want them to grow up to be 
people that sense that have a sense of civic duty to help other people uh, and not to be blinded by you know and just be immersed in their own world I wanted to travel and see the world and 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 there's nothing like traveling uh, to understand you know that there's an entire world outside of outside of your own your own life um, but I, I don't have um, you know, unreasonable expectations that they're going to love Afghanistan or be as attached to Afghanistan as I am, just as I am not as attached to it as my father is. You know, they, they will bring home their Western sensibilities, and I, and I accept that. Um, you know, in, in many ways, in some ways, I'm much closer to my children than me and my siblings were to our parents in the mm -hmm. sense that I'm very open with them. They climb my shoulders, they wrestle with me, they beat me up, which is unthinkable to, thing to do to my father, <laughs> you know. Um, and so some of those barriers uh, in, in, in this environment have broken. Um, and I just hope they turn out to be good, decent, honest people and kind people and, and happy people who are successful. That's what every parent wants for their children. Uh, I don't know what advice to give to the children of other people. <laughs> you know? uh, the only advice I will give you is that you, have, you live in an amazing country. Uh, you know, and, and you live in a place where you have the opportunity to have a voice where your voice is important. And there's, to me, there's no bigger waste than, than wasting that opportunity, um, which is kind of a highfalutin way of saying, come November 4th, go vote, you know? <laughs> um, make a voice heard. On that note, uh, Khalid, our time is up. And I I'm so grateful for the time that you took to visit Brunel. And um, as I understand it, there is a book signing. Uh, Khalid, I'm sure you have hundreds and hundreds of books that are waiting to be uh, signed by you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you uh, for having me. Um, I want to just very briefly thank you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. I, thank you very much. I just want to say that when, um, when my novel was first published and I began touring, um, <laughs> I would go to bookstores and the kind of venues and there would be five or six or seven people who came to see me. Uh, and so having been there, uh, the fact that you have all turned up here and uh, spent your evening here listening to me, it means a lot to me. I don't take it for granted. I'm very, very grateful for it. So I, I thank you for that. And I also want to thank uh, Paula Nerschel. Uh, who's um, bringing Afghan women to be educated here in the United States uh, with uh, IA, uh, IEAW. So thank you very much. Great job. Thank you.